Awesome. Jake Hamilton, Good Day Chicago. Mr. Bacon, good to see you again, sir. Good to see you, man. Um, obviously, one of the things I love about the horror genre is that it has the power to affect how you live your life in the sense that like, if you watch a really good horror film, maybe you don't sleep that night. If you hear a noise, you're like looking around the corner to sort of see what it is. And there aren't a lot of genres that have that power. You are, I think, a master of horror. You've covered so many different sort of sub genres. You've done slasher with Friday the 13th and creature feature with, with tremors and obviously supernatural with this and stir of echoes. I'm curious which of those most had the effect on your day-to-day -day life. Like whenever you went to bed at night, maybe you just had a little bit more trouble going to sleep. Uh, well, you know, I think that, um, people sometimes ask if it's a scary, um, if it's scary to be on a, a, a horror movie set. I mean, you have to keep in mind that we're not hearing the music or, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're surrounded by a lot of other people. We're not alone. Um, it's really more a question of, uh, having to put yourself in that kind of headspace all day long. And if you're going to be the lead in a, in a horror film, you're going to be spending at least 75% of the movie being some version of scared or terrified or have it or creeped out or whatever it is that tends to permeate um, your psyche a little bit. It affects me a little bit more like after work, you know, in the dreams or um, not so much on the set on the set. I can really kind of focus on my job, but it, but it does have a, uh, does have a lasting effect. You know, when I was doing tremors, um, my wife was uh, eight, uh, eight months pregnant, pregnant, and uh, uh, I, I, so I had a lot of stuff that I was kind of um, dealing with, just about how frightening life was, and having to provide and and uh, bringing a child into the world, and all that, that that kind of stuff. There's a lot of things going on. I would wake up and sleepwalk. I was sleepwalking while I was making the movie, and I would pick up my my pregnant wife and carry her out of the house that we were renting, and say, "We got to get out of here. We got to get out of here. There's monsters." And you know, and she'd say, "Honey, you're sleeping. Put me down." <laughs> so that was kind of a combination of what I was doing during the day, plus also what was just kind of going on in my head. Wow, that's amazing. Also, I love Trimmers, by the way. Uh, I was going to bring that up a little bit later. Um, obviously, this year is the 40th anniversary of uh, Friday the 13th. I grew up on the Friday the 13th movies. I love them so much. I know a lot of actors, yourself and, and Johnny Depp, Jamie Lee Curtis, all got their start in the horror genre. I'm sort of curious, did you learn anything on the set of Friday the 13th that has stuck with you over the past four decades? Um, well... I mean, listen, all experiences that I've had as a, as a working actor are lessons. Um, you know, by the time I started, uh, my first couple of jobs that I was able to get were so, uh, you know, I learned so much. I, I felt like, what have I been doing taking all these acting classes? I just, I just learned so much in this, you know, 10 minutes it's about the process of filmmaking and, and, uh, and, you know, little things that you learn, you know, cameras and, and lenses and, you know, sort of, uh, you know, how people shoot things and edit and relationships with directors and other actors. Um, but, you know, Friday the 13th is, uh, it was amazing that it, it uh, had this kind of impact on um, a, a very specific subgenre of the horror thing, which is a slasher um, film. But it's not like I went into that film because... I thought I want to get on board here. I was basically, I needed the money. I mean, I was out of work and, you know, I was a, you know, a, a young kind of starving actor in New York. I was, you know, working off Broadway, which wasn't really paying the rent. And so not a lot of movies came to New York in those days. Uh, people kind of forget that in the seventies, um, almost all films were made in, in LA. Once in a while, they'd come and shoot some stuff. So there really wasn't that much movie work. So uh, they said, there's this, you know, come in and audition for this low budget horror movie. You know, nobody will probably ever see it. I was like, great. And then <laughs> and, uh, the rest is history. For sure. Well, it's great history because I, I still I actually rewatched it recently and it still holds up um, yeah. as we wrap up. You know, unless I, I mean, one of the things about the horror genre is that it is known for sequels. Obviously, with Friday the 13th, we've gotten several of them. And unless I'm missing something and I'm, I may very well be missing one, you haven't really done a sequel in your you've been in sequels, but not a sequel to a film that you've been in. And I'm sort of curious if that was 
if that is the case, unless I'm missing something, is that a conscious choice on your part? And is there a character that you'd be interested in, in sort of revisiting and picking back up? Well, it's not, it was, it's definitely not a conscious choice. I mean, I can tell you specifically Friday the 13th, I was dead. So I couldn't have been in that sequel. Right. Right. Uh, I don't know that there's been other sequels. I, I mean, I, there were plenty of sequels of Tremors, but the thing about Tremors was that Tremors was not a box office hit. It was a hit on video when it went to, you know, Blockbuster in the old days of VHS. So when they came to me for Tremors 2, it was, the plan was to go direct to video, what we called direct to video back in those days. And, and I was like, I don't want to be in movies to be on video. I want to be movies that go into the movie theater. So that was a very, very simple reason for passing. But when it comes to Tremors, I really, really, really wanted to revisit that character and developed with Blumhouse a um, television series and shot a really, really excellent pilot for it because I, it was the one character that I really wanted to see what he happened to him, you know, 25 years later. Uh, and uh, they didn't, uh, Sci-Fi Network decided not to, to pick it up and go to series, which I still really don't understand. Um, it was a super cool pilot, but it, that, that was that. So uh, I think that one's done. That's such a bummer. I would have killed to have seen it. Were you still rocking the cowboy hat? Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. It, was the, it was all the same. You know, he was a, he was a, just an, a much older version of the same guy, <laughs> uh, Mr. Bacon. Seriously, I am such a fan, and you're always so kind to me every time we speak, man. And it's so good to see you. And uh, hopefully, the next time we chat, we'll get to be in person, man. Sounds good. All right, man. Good to. See